All right, so we are in AP Calculus. Today's date is Tuesday, April 30th. I am back, so it means the sound you can actually hear. Um, it was it was hard. I forgot to boost it. Usually I do a 400% boost, and I forgot to do that. I redid it, so if you look at the video now, you can actually hear, although the sound quality is probably not the best. So, Ben, we miss you. Say hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. Um, oh, by the way, yesterday when, Bruce, when you gave us that video, there was this one, one, on, uh, one question, one, like, where you weren't supposed to use the calculator. Well, I know. I had to use the calculator to check yeah. my work because I was I was awake at like 2 in the morning or whatever. I was just like not thinking correctly. So, I had to wake up 7 and I come here at 7.30. Please. So, actually, sometimes I wake up at 2, go back to 3, go back to 4, go back to 5. Right. Well, not that I'm bragging, but I am. I woke up at 2 this morning, so. And I have not gone to sleep since 2. Number two, Sandy Point, Sandy Point Beach, <laughs> Sandy Point, Sandy Point Beach is um, doing this thing. So this is the uh, removal. So write a giant negative sign here, a giant positive sign here. The pumping station adds sand to the beach. Um, I'm actually curious if that actually happens in real life. Do they pump in sand somewhere? Maybe. Um, I imagine in the fancier places they do. They all have money for that. Um, this is number two, which means we do have a calculator, which means arrow, you'll have this calculator. Ben, you'll have to use an emulator on, well, you don't have a smartphone, I don't think, but some emulator, I think I posted one online. Or you could just use Desmos. Desmos will do the same thing, but quicker. So, how much sand will the tide remove? I'm only talking about the negative rate here, this R, during this six-hour period. And I don't know why I'm being so flamboyant in my language. You guys did really, really good on number two. And again, Ben, for the stats here, uh, here's stats for number two, seven, nine, seven. You guys uh, had an average of 7.7, .7, which is a crazy high score. What, again, are you supposed to average in order to pass the test? A three. And you guys did a seven. You were more than prepared to get a five, and then the multiple choice is what killed us. It says seven out of nine, but it also looks like I only missed one point, but I'm yeah, I will talk about that in a sec. Um, here is the scoring guide really quickly if Ben wants to just see the work. Um, I don't know where that point came from. Well, let's talk about it. So, removing from the beach, that means I'm going to be taking the integral for the six-hour period from zero to six that it's talking about from here, zero to six, of the R of T function, R of T dt. And that will be approximated by the calculator, which I will open up now. If you want to do this again, just to feel more confident, you can, or we can skip over part A. It's up to you guys. Um, but the first thing that you need to do is you need to, I'm going to need to plug in both of these really quickly. So 2 plus 5 sine of a um, bunch of stuff in here. It's going to be 4 times, I think I can just do times 4 pi t altogether divided by uh, 25. So that's the first function. The second function, you might as well get it out of the way. 15 um, x, there we go, divided by, I'm going to need, I'm gonna need parentheses down here. Don't know, I did the second one. 1 plus 3x, and parentheses, and our window is going to be between uh, 0 and 6. 0, enter, 6, enter, and zoom 0. We'll let that graph as we figure out how to do part A. So for part A, after this finishes graphing those two functions, um, you can do this graphically or uh, non-graphically. Which way did you two do it? Do you remember? I use the graph. You use the graph? So the non-graphically would be Math 9, mm -hmm. this one. Oh, I did that. Oh, you did that? Yeah. yeah. This one is a little bit faster. Uh, so you say Math 9. This is my Y1 function, so uh, var is right, enter 1. Y1 comma with respect to x from 0 to 6. And when we do that, we get the answer as 31.816. 31.816, and checking the solution guide. 31.815 or 31.816. There were two points there, the integral and answer with units, which I forgot to do because it says indicate units of measure. Um, so this is the amount of sand. So sand is measured in cubic yards. So it's going to be yards cubed, or cubic I yards. I was playing it safe, so I said cubic yards times sand. Yeah, that's what I said too. But that's not what I'm doing. We'll put it just in case as well. 
Um, what does it say in the solution guide? It just says yards cubes. Yeah, so you don't need to talk about sand. Can I say just cubic yards? Like I should like spell cubic. Yes, and most people do, especially the English language learners that don't understand that cubic yards equals yards to the power of three. They'll actually spell out cubic yards, and you will 100% get it correct. Okay, but I don't know, like, how yeah, yeah, so now you know. Um, okay, an expression for y of t. So here we go. y of t is equal to the n total number of cubic yards at time t. And this is just going to be the integral of the positive minus the negative. So it's the integral. Um, Wait, what about the start value? Oh, did it have a start value? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so Ooh. thank you. Whew. Yeah. Do you have your logger for extra credit? Because you should really be logging these. I'll log it for 2,500 plus the integral of the positive, so s of t, minus r of t, all of that thing, dt. Bunch of parentheses, dt. And then from 0 to whatever time I'm... Ooh, this is the key thing that some of us missed. I don't know if I took off points for this. Okay, I wrote something totally different. 0 to t, and these things cannot be t. Someone tell me why they can't be t. Because the other thing is t. Yeah, you can't have double variables. Come on, computer. Grab, delete, grab... Uh, no. But they're referred to everywhere else in C. You can't just randomly change it. Maybe I have to use the eraser button. Oh my gosh. This computer is going too slow. I'm clicking too many things. I'm just going to erase all of you. Chunk, chunk, chunk. <laughs> Why? Why? All right. R of, we'll say like X or some other random letter. You can say A, X, B. <laughs> You can put in any letter aside from but, uh, T. Everywhere else it's referred to as I don't get it. The why That's be Yeah, why? Why? Why do you have to why? change it or why can you just randomly change it? Um, why do you have to change it? Oh. Because when I take the integral of an accum or when I take the derivative or when I do anything, when I plug in a value of T, I will take the I will be evaluating this thing and it gets plugged in for those variables. But isn't the I can't plug t into itself. I have to plug t into a different in variable. In terms of whatever the other variable is, like in terms of x. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and we want to get s in terms of t. So when we plug in these bounds, the bounds will be in terms of t but as well. Can it already be in terms of t because it has a t next to it? Yeah, but then it doesn't so technically, you should be saying x is equal to t and x is equal to 0 because these have to match up with the inside. Okay. I don't know if that clarifies we'll enough. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure. This is a question probably for John, whether or not... Oh, you know what? I think I see it. You got it? Okay. You got enough to explain it or just for you? I think I get it. Okay. Um, yeah, and then let's look at the solution guide really quick. Um, so yeah, one for the integrand, which means the inside part, one for the limits, and one for the answer, which means you, the only thing that's left for the answer is the 2,500. So those are the three points for the breakdown. That might have been one of the points that one person lost. For part C, find the rate at which the total amount of sand of the beach is changing. So if I'm looking for a rate, I'm literally plugging into a rate. I don't need to do an integral. So the integral here, or I'm not doing the integral, I'm just plugging in the change. So I'm doing s of 4 minus r of 4. And if you made these backwards, then that's probably where an error was made. It has to be the positive minus the negative. Not the bigger minus the small. Yes. So the positive, and again, you can just do that by doing vars right. Enter 1 of 4 minus, oops, minus vars right. Enter 2, y2 of 4. And when you do that, it's 1.909. So this is approximately 1.909. And looking at the answer key, one point. Ooh, what just happened here? Oh my gosh! I did the negative. I did exactly what someone did on the, the actual um, practice test, which is I did the pot or the minus minus the positive. I should have switched these around. So I really have to do. So you wrote it down properly. Exactly. I should have done y2 of 4 minus y1 of 4, which means that this would be a negative 1.9. Yeah, so that was that was my mistake. So it should be a negative 1.909. And then how to score yourself? You just need to get the answer correct. 
and you need to, does it say units? It doesn't say to have units, but you should just always include units. Um, this is the rate, so this should be in yards, cube per time, what is our time? Is it minutes, hour, okay, per hour. And then finally for part D, um, what is the, at what time T are we looking for a minimum? That means we are looking for an absolute minimum or I'm making a table. Yep, so I'm going to have T values here. I'm going to do start plus change. And that will be equal to my end value. Making this quick table. Bada boom, bada bang. Obviously, I need the end boundaries, 0 and 6. And the quickest way to do that is Y equals. I'm going to do right here, far as right, enter 1, minus. Oh, wait, I'm doing this backwards again. God darn it. Okay, so I'm going to do insert. Um, var is right, enter 2, y2 minus y1, and then I'll delete this guy. So I'm doing y2 minus y1, the positive 15x divided by 1 over 3 plus x, so that's positive 1 minus the negative 1, and I'm going to turn off the previous two graphs. Turn you off, turn you off, and again, my window is still correct, so I just have to do zoom 0. So now when I actually graph it, I can see exactly where it's going to be at a minimum because I'll see what's happening on my graph. Again, these are going to be rates, so it's, things are going to be happening a little bit weird. Go, go, faster, go, faster. Just to know what speed, you know, like in terms of acceleration? Or yeah, so uh, unrelated question, but what is speed, right? Yeah. Do you know it, Rochelle? So it's not velocity. Velocity has a different definition. Oh. Sure. In terms yeah. of looking at acceleration, is it it's some integral? Both yeah, of them are some integral. So for velocity or for speed, it's like is it a position? No. So it's it, some type of integral of acceleration. Velocity is. Well, acceleration. No, velocity is not acceleration. Position. Velocity is the integral of acceleration. But what's the difference between velocity and speed? Oh, velocity. Velocity. Oh, okay, speed is. Mm -hmm. No, they're both they're both kind of the same thing. But the thing is, yeah. I can you can't really have a negative speed. A velocity you can. A velocity you can have a negative. Well, is that true? Uh, I don't think so. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Um, speed you really want to check to see if v and a have the same sign. For example, if my acceleration is positive, let's assume acceleration is positive and velocity of, is negative, what's happening? Am I increasing speed or decreasing speed? Increasing. Well, I, I mean, I'm obviously decreasing the velocity. Oh, so. But am I speeding? Mm, what's the way to say this? I actually don't know what I'm trying to say. I'll have to come back and think about this because I don't remember what the definition of speed is off the top of my head, and I should. I know it has something to do with comparing signs, I thought, or taking absolute value of things. Yeah, I'll have to come back. Anyway, um, and I'm sure Ben's like on his computer, it's this, Mr. Sindel, why are you not thinking of it? Um, minimum, coming back to our graph here, I'm looking for CVs. Do you see a CV on this graph? Yes. Where? Is it right there, right there, or right there? Right there. <laughs> is it one, two, or three? Three. It's three. That's a CV. Why is that a CV? Because that's where it crosses the x-axis. When it x equals zero, right? Yeah, it's where it crosses the x-axis. And this is a graph of the rate, or graph of f prime. f prime equals zero is the definition of CV. That means f prime is equal to zero is the height. Height is zero. Height crosses the x-axis. This is a CV. We need to figure out what that is. So I'm going to do second trace, and I'm going to come down here to the zero, so two, and I'm just going to hit left boundary, zero, right boundary, um, six. I think six is fine. And I'm just going to guess five. And it should give me that value right here, which is 5.118. So 5.118 is our CV. All right, and then my start value is always going to be 2,500. 
2,500, 2,500, 2,500. Wow, this is going to be a long video because I'm not even onto the packet yet. Plus the integral of, don't care because it's going to be from 0 to 0. This is going to be the integral from 0 to 5.118. This is going to be the integral from 0 to 6 of r positive minus the negative, so s minus r, s minus r. I'm going to abbreviate because I really want to just get through this. The answer was 5.118, and the way that you do that on your calculator is you do, since I have a y3 function that actually does everything for me, so I'm going to use my y3 function. I'm going to do math 9, uh, var is right, enter 3, y3 with respect to x from 0 to 5.118, 5.118. And you get the final answer as, go, go, go. You got this calculator. Well, I guess I can look at the solution guide as well. When you do 5.118, you get 2,492. Oh, yes, that is correct. 2,492. Point... Three six nine. And that was the answer. You should still have a number right here, and that's from doing the same thing, but changing this five point one one eight out for a six. Uh, you still need to figure out which one of them is the smallest, and this one is the smallest. And this is the justification comes from the table. All right, let's come to the packet, which is the thing that we really care about. Now we can actually do some writing. You should get in the habit of doing that every single time, yes. But you didn't explain why, how we can miss one point and get seven out of nine. Um, so did you get, how many points did you get for D? Three. How many points did you get for C? No points. So this point there, how many points did you get for B? Three. How many points did you get for A? Two. Oh, then that is a math error on my part. <laughs> So um, if that is indeed the case, that means that arrow, you should have an 8, which changes your score from a 2.5 to a, it's still a 2.5. Okay. But it does raise our average score, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, all right. Pretty sure. well, anyway. Coming back here, I'll double check that. OK, so we have another type of function. The rate at which uh, raw sewage enters a treatment tank is given by this function. You both have your calculators ready to go. We're going to plug this in because this is a calculator type problem. You can see that it's problem number one. So on our calculators, I'm going to clear all this stuff, clear, 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 and I'm going to enter 850 plus 715 times cosine of, it's going to be pi x squared divided by 9. And my window is going to be between 0 and 4, it looks like. So I'm going to do that right now. Window, 0 to 4. And I might as well just zoom 0 that and let it graph while we can uh, continue reading this. So um, treated sewage is removed from the tank at a constant rate. So we have the positive rate here, the negative rate right here. Entering at this, subtracting at that. And the starting value is 0. The start is empty. So we don't have to worry about the start, which is kind of cool, which means most people will get an extra point because they might have forgotten the start, but we know that the start is zero. Let's talk about part A. Part A, how many gallons of sewage enter the treatment during the interval? So we don't care about the negative rate. We only care about the positive rate because we're only uh, considering entering the tank. Enter means positive. So what am I going to write here? Very nice. You both are on it. ETDT. So on here, you can do it graphically, or you can do a second quit and do math 9 of bar is right, enter 1, y1 with respect to x from 0 to 4. That will calculate that, and this is going to be approximated by, go, go, uh, 3,981. 3,981 point, round of three decimal places, 0 to 2. 0, 2, 2. Oh, it says round to the nearest gallon. Never mind. So I did not round that correctly. So the final answer that I should be writing is 3,981 gallons, I believe. Yeah, gallons. And gallons is abbreviated by G-A-L. 
All right, that was quick. On to part B. At what time is the amount of sewage in the treatment tank greatest? So I'm looking for the absolute max, which means I'm making a table. Exactly. And then I'm rounding. I <laughs> This is probably going to be something that people are making a mistake on. You still need to round to the nearest gallon for that max. So for that max, I'm going to do T start, which is zero, so I don't really need to consider it, plus change is equal to the end value that I'm looking for. So obviously I need to check the end boundaries, zero and four. I also need to check the CVs. So on my graph, do I have any CVs? I might have a CV there. Does it touch there at zero? I can actually check by doing um, second calc, zero. If I do left bound zero to four, I'm gonna guess around three. Is it actually equal to zero there? Calculate, go, go. Nope, there's no sign change. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that's why I forgot. Thank you. Are you supposed to graph them, like, subtracted from each other? Yeah, I'm just going to graph them all in... Uh, no, you're right. I should do it as a second graph. So I'm going to say uh, y2 is going to be y1 minus that thing. So I'm going to say var is right, enter 1. Uh, y1 minus, and it's constantly removing 645. Minus 645. So now y2 represents the graph of the change, not just of the entering. So I'm going to hit zoom zero again, wait for that to graph. Good catch, Arrow. You need to be logging these extra credit points. They're everywhere. You're probably getting like two or three points a day, like multiplied by these last review weeks. So it's like times 15. That's like 30 points. That's 0.3. That's like another packet, but without doing the packet. Because 100 points is a full letter grade change, so you're 30% there just by yeah. logging. But All right. Very now we definitely have zeros, so we have two CVs. Which CV should we use, the left one or the right one, if we're looking for the absolute maximum? It should be the yeah, first one. The left one, yeah. And again, we'll say that this one wasn't considered because of whatever reason. So again, second, trace, two, I'm going to do left bound zero to three. I'm going to guess 2.5. And I get about, I'm going to guess like 2.2 something, 2.3, 2.309. So 2.309, and I'll just find the other one just for uh, for funsies, I guess. I'm going to do second trace, 2, and I'm going to guess between uh, 3 and 4. I'll guess 3.5, and it's going to be, I'm going to guess almost exactly 3.5, or 3.559. So I'll say in here 3.559, or rather T is equal to 3.555, not considered. because preceded by negative area. All right, so we have our table. Um, I guess we, do we need to consider zero? Yes. Why? Uh, zero is followed by positive or negative area? Oh, positive. Positive, which means can zero be the absolute max? I mean, if it is the absolute max, that means that this point should be even bigger because this one has even more area than zero. So this one can't be absolute max. And the reason is because followed by positive area. 2.309 definitely could be a possible answer. And so could 4 because 4 is also maybe this area right here on the far right is bigger than that one. I mean, it doesn't look like it, and I would guess that that one is probably the answer, but we do need to check, because maybe something weird is happening with the calculator. So we do need to check these two values, even though it's pretty clear that 2.309 is the answer. So here we go. The start was zero for both of them. The change is gonna be the integral between zero and 2.309 for this one, and the integral from zero to four of this one, and it's always gonna be E of T, E of t minus, um, what is it called? Just 645? Thank you. 645, all of that dt. So E of t minus 645, all of that dt. And that is going to be approximated, approximated, come on now, by, so we have to do some math here. So it's going to be, we don't have to do any initial value, so it would be like 0 plus math 9 
it's going to be var is right, enter uh, 2, because y2 now represents um, e of t minus 645 with respect to x from 0 to 2.309. Hit enter. It's 1,637. 1637.177 Oh yes, we still need to do that at the very end. Um, I might as well just round it right now. <laughs> Here it is. Rounding to the nearest gallon. There it is. And then finally I'm going to hit second enter to go back to the previous line. Instead of 2.309, I'm going to enter 4. Delete, 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 delete. Enter. And it's 1,401 and that's rounded to the nearest gallon. 1,000 401 and it's asking for um, what is the maximum amount and justify the answers so the justification comes from the table and then the answer is um, t equals 2.309 with 1637 gallons is the max and finally, on to part C, our last part for this free response question, this FRQ question. Uh, the cost of treating raw sewage is this. So this is the cost. Think of this as a function of money per gallon. To the nearest dollar, what is the total cost of treating the sewage that enters the tank during the time 0 to 4? So um, we now need to multiply this cost by the amount of sewage that's entering. Again, we don't have to worry about what's being subtracted. I'm only uh, considering what's entering the tank. So I need to multiply E of T times the cost because it's just cost times the amount. Cost times the amount is the total cost, right? Mm -hmm. So E of T times this thing. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 4 of E of T times this other function that they just gave us, which is 0 0.015, so 0. 0.15. Can we put that inside the integral? Okay. That's going to be inside the integral, yeah, because it has a variable in it. Okay. Minus 0 0.02, so minus 0 0.02t, oh. all of that dt. What are we doing? Oh boy, all right, so the fast way to do this, I go to y equals, I'm going to come down here to my y3 variable, I'm going to do second, var is right, enter one, oh, what, oops, what just, <laughs> what just happened here? Bar is right, enter 1, y1 times, and then I'm going to start my parentheses, 0.15 minus 0.02x. All right, so now this y3 function represents this e of t times 0.15 minus 0.02t. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a blank stare from Michelle, that's why I'm waiting. I'm sorry, what? Are, are you okay with understanding why y3 is equal to this function? Yes. This integrand, the inside part of the integral, e of t times 0.15 minus 0.02t is this y3 function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the integral of this y3 function. So math 9, bar is right, enter 3, y3 with respect to x from 0 to uh, 0 to 4, and I get the answer. It's thinking, thinking, thinking. You can see the little scrolly bar. Yeah, 474. So this is approximately equal to in dollars, 400 and 74, does it say round to the nearest anything? Right. To the nearest dollar, yeah. So 474.3, so yeah, $474. Whew. All right, that was all of the free response questions, A, B, and C. Ask me questions now. We still have 17 minutes left of the class. Yes, backside on the video as well. These are the problems from your actual uh, number two final exam. Um, let's go through them. You should have already seen them. They should look familiar. Um, which of the following could be constants of A and B? Okay, so let's work with A first. In order to get A, I'm going to take the, I'm going to look at the horizontal tangent. What is the definition of horizontal tangent? Limit as x approaches infinity, exactly. When x approaches infinity, I get rid of all the small things, all of these small things. And I'm just left with ax squared over x squared. So, 
Um, that's going to be left with AX squared over X squared because I got rid of all the insignificant things. These things are not going to affect it as much as the X squared and X squared terms. X squared and X squared cancels each other out, and I'm left with just A. Well, what was the horizontal tangent? 3. That means A was equal to 3. Exactly. Time to go into part B, or for B. B is looking at this bottom. So what is the definition of a vertical tangent? When limit of x equals 2. Oh. No, so it's looking at where the denominator, denominator is equal to 0. Exactly. So I'm going to set this denominator equal to 0. x squared minus b is equal to 0. Well, where did that happen? At what x value did that happen? 2. So 2 squared minus b is equal to 0. 2 squared is 4. Isn't it I don't know I'm writing minus b. I'm rewriting this problem wrong. Yeah, it should be a plus b. Thank you. Which means 4 plus b is equal to 0. Harold, <laughs> that's three extra credit points that you could have gotten today. And then from there, that means b must be? Uh, negative 4. Which means a plus b, which is... Oh wait, sorry, it doesn't ask for a plus b, it's just asking for what is a, what is b. Sometimes they add them. Which means a is 3, and b is negative 4. The answer is d. Alright, number 11. What is the slope of the line tangent? Even though it says line tangent, you're only looking for the slope, which means you're only taking the derivative and plugging in 1. So first, I needed to find y prime. Oh, we have something on the top, something on the bottom, which means I'm using... That quo uh, quotient, rule. quotient rule. Quotient rule is what again? Uh, it's low D high. You always start low, oh. but you're going to end high. High D low. Always start low. All over low low. All right, so low is x plus 1. D high. What's the derivative of e to the negative x? There it is, negative e to the negative x. That's going to be subtracting high, which is e to the negative x, d low. Derivative of low is just times 1. All of this over low low, which is just x plus 1. Quantity squared. Let's immediately plug in x equals 1. When I plug in 1, I'm going to have 2 here. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times. Um, when I plug in 1, I'm going to get negative e to the negative 1 minus e to the negative 1 all of this over 4. I'm waiting for you two to catch up, making sure that we are okay with this. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4. They, of course, did a little bit of simplifying by factoring out an e to the negative 1, so I will do that as well. If I factor out an e to the negative 1, what is left over? No. There's negative a one. Two, negative, two. negative two minus. Maybe. What's e to the negative one divided by e to the negative one? Because we had a minus sign here, which we have to. Yeah. So a positive times a negative. That means that this is really a negative two, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then a minus e to the negative one. So like that, all divided by. Four, and this e to the negative 1 is going to go to the bottom, so this is now equal to negative 3 on the top, and on the bottom we have an e, or 4e. And what is our answer? B. Again, we have 11 minutes left. Any questions on number 11? Rochelle, are you good? We're on to number 12, and then 13, we're done with the video. Really, really close. I know it's a long video. So f prime is equal to this, and f of e is equal to 5. So what is f of e? In order to find f of e, I need to do what to f prime? To find f, what do I do to f prime? Integral. Integral, exactly. So I'm going to do the integral of f prime, integral of 2 over x, which is the same thing as 2 times x to the... Negative 1, exactly, dx. All right. 
that is going to be what? So it's going to be 2. Does anyone know the rule for x to the negative 1, or should I show you why it doesn't work? It's going to divide by 0. It's going to divide by 0, exactly. Exactly. When you divide by 0, think of natural log of x. All right. And it tells, oh, by the way, this is plus c. It tells us that this initial condition, we have to figure out what this c is. It tells us when we plug in square root of e into x, we should get a 5 out of this, which means if I do 2 natural log of e to the negative, or so not negative 1 half, e to the power of 1 half plus c, that should be equal to 5. So e to the negative or, or e to the one half means that this one half can come down in front. This is a rule of logarithms. It's the power rule of logarithms. This one half can come down in front, and then you get rid of the power. So I really have now. I'll keep that in the notes if people want it in the notes. That means that this is really equal to. Or it really turns into five is equal to natural log of e. What is the natural log of e? Two times one half. Uh, yep, they cancel out. Is natural log of e one? It is, yeah. Natural log and e are opposite, or they're inverse functions, so that goes to one. Okay. <laughs> so one plus c is equal to five, therefore c is equal to? Uh, four. There it is. c is equal to four, which means I now need to plug in e to my function. So here's my function. I'll write it in red, sure. My function now looks like this f of x is now equal to 2 natural log of x plus c, but we know what c is, c is 4, plus 4. Now I'm going to plug in e. So 2 natural log of e. Natural log of e again is 1, they cancel out. 2 plus 4 is 6. There it is. All right, and our final question for the video, we still have eight minutes left of class. I need to take the integral of him. Oh, how am I going to do that? Because that's taxman, right? But taxman doesn't work. You're going to pay taxman with a variable rate. I'll show you why taxman doesn't work. You don't need to write this down. U is equal to x cubed plus 1. Would we all agree that would be the inner? That means taxman would be 1 u prime is going to be 3x squared. Oh no, you're paying with a variable rate. Taxman does not work, which means we're going to do what? Taxman more times, no. <laughs> no. Uh, like u substitution? Nope, u substitution will also have a variable rate. Won't work. Good guess, though. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's a good strategy for the AP test, but for the homework where you actually have to do it, Nope, doesn't work. Let's go ahead and actually square this thing. You know how to square a binomial. Okay, square the first, double the product, square the last. Rock Riley to sleep. So square the first, x to the power of 6, double the product. Well, the product of 1 and x cubed is x cubed. So double that is 2x cubed. And square the last, plus 1. So now I'm going to take the integral of that thing, dx. Now we can actually do that. So Wait, where did that 2x plus power 3 came from? The... I will show you the longer way of doing this. Yeah. So the shortcut is square the first, double the product, oh, square the last. Sorry, the I'll really quickly show you the long way, which is x cubed plus 1, x cubed plus 1. So this is x to the power of 6. This is x cubed. This is x cubed. This is 1. x cubed plus x cubed is 2 x cubed. All right, so from there, I'm going to take the integral. Um, taking the integral, this is going to go x to the power of 7. Div oh, that's not a 7. x to the power of 7, divide down by 7, plus 2x to the power of 4, divide down by 4, plus x, plus c. Which of these looks like it's the answer? Um, I see 1 7 This is a 1 half. It looks like it's b. Yep. All right, ask me questions. We went through a ton of calculus right there.
No questions. Nope. All right, and then we have that back side of the page that you have for homework. Is this the back side? Calculator. Um, let me look through these and tell you which one you need a calculator for. No calculator. No calculator. No calculator. No calculator. Yeah, so you don't need a calculator on anything. What's the relationship between the word calculus and the word calculator? So, um, I mean, the original word for calculator comes from people who calculated things by hand. So if you can think of someone that could do menial tasks like a calculator that's where the calculator comes from but calculus doesn't come from menial people doing easy or easy addition and subtraction over and over again that one actually requires some really heavy thinking so you're not usually going to give that to a calculator unless you have a computer which these calculators now have in them yeah yeah i'm not exactly sure why we call it calculus where does that word come from i'll have to research that and i never got back to um arrow with your question of where does what is the definition of speed? I will look that up right now and hopefully record a second part of the video.